Okay, so in one of the most important concepts in, uh, in MP completeness <coughs> is the distinction between an optimization problem and a decision problem. So let's take an example of each. So let's understand this by example. So let's give two examples of problems that are known to be MP complete. One is the subset sum problem. The subset sum problem, you are given <coughs> a set and a target number. And the objective is to determine whether there is a subset of this set that sums to this number. So given a set S and a target <coughs> number T, determine if there is a subset of S that sums to T. Example, S equals 2, 3, 4. If T equals 5, so you're given this set, and the, answer, the, the question is, is there a subset of this set with sum 5? Clearly, there is one. So the answer is yes. And the subset is 2, 3. OK. Now, if t equals uh, <coughs> 8, is there a subset of this set that, has, that can sum to 8? In fact, there aren't very many subsets here, so that you only have three, so two and three is going to give you five, two and four, six, seven, uh, all three of them, the sum is going to be nine. So there is no subset that can give you eight. So the answer is no. Now this problem looks very innocent, looks, looks easy, but it doesn't have any... Uh, you know, any general algorithm that runs in polynomial time and can solve it. It's, uh, you know, basically, uh, if you want to insist on uh, solving this problem for an arbitrary instance, then uh, you will have to do an exponential algorithm. Why exponential? You need to check every combination. Yeah, you need to check every combination, and there is two power n combinations. Now, by the way, this problem looks similar to which of the problems that we have studied? Zero one knapsack. Yeah, exactly. It's similar to the zero one knapsack problem. And in fact, it does have a, uh, a dynamic programming solution that is similar to the dynamic programming solution of the zero one knapsack problem. Uh, but that solution is going gonna, is gonna to run in uh, for the for the subset sum problem, you will have the items here in the row. So item 1, 2, 3, 4 through n. And what do you think this, how many columns do you think we will have? Combination equal to the number of items in the, hmm? equal to the number of elements in the set. <coughs> number of elements, well this is the number, this is n. So what's the other dimension? Think of its similarity to the zero, one knapsack problem. So what should we have here? Mm -hmm. hmm? In case, well, in that case, five, right? Mm -hmm. In the case of the example, it would be five. So whatever the number is. You yeah, the target, the target t. So this is going to be the target. In fact, you know, the problem is defined in this set S with n elements of the target. So this is going to be the target. So the number of columns that you need here is equal to the target, but this makes it a non-polynomial algorithm because 
this target is a number that can be arbitrarily large, and your input size is going to be an encoding of this number, right? So if this number, if t is a million, if t equals 10 power 6, then your input will have you know, six digits in it. If the, if the input is encoded in decimal, you will have s six digits or seven digits in this case. You know, it doesn't matter, six plus one. So the size of the encoding, the value of the number is an exponential function of the size of the encoding. Therefore, this is an exponential. Uh, strictly speaking, this is an exponential algorithm. Unless the input is represented in, unary, in the unary system, and what's the unary system? It's a hypothetical system in which you represent the number by putting a number of ones. Like in this case, if it's a million, you put a million ones. So it's a system, it's, it's a hypothetical system that nobody uses. And if this was used, then the running time will be a linear function. Well, at least in th th this dimension of the running time will be a polynomial time function of the input size. So uh, just you know, uh, go back to our explanation why the dynamic programming solution, the dynamic programming solution to the 0, 1 knapsack problem is not a polynomial time algorithm. Strictly speaking, it's not polynomial time. But in practice, in practice, it, it runs very fast in many cases. And as you have seen in assignment number four, you have implemented the dynamic programming solution for the uh, zero one knapsack problem. And did it ever take a long time? Did it ever make you wait? No, it never made you wait. So it always ran within seconds or a fraction of a second uh, compared to the branch and bound solution. So, uh, you know, this is one of those problems that in practice, it's not a big deal. You know, it's not, a, it's not, a, it's not really a hard problem. The dynamic programming solution works well uh, most of the time. Okay? Now, let's describe the other problem, which is the traveling salesman problem, which is the most uh, famous uh, uh, MP-complete problem, the traveling salesman problem. Or TSP. So the traveling salesman problem given an awaited undirected graph and given a weighted, well, in fact, uh, given a complete, let's call, let's assume that it's complete. Given a complete weighted undirected graph, find a simple cycle that goes through all vertices and has the lowest possible cost. Now, what do we mean by the cost in this case? What's the cost of a cycle? So let's give an example. So for the traveling salesman problem, so this is a weighted undirected graph. So this is complete with A, B, C, D. And let's have one and two, three, two, two, and here let's have 1,000. We'll see why. So we have 1,000 for this example. Uh, so 
you know, the, you know, originally the problem is described as, you know, you have these uh, nodes in the graph that represent cities, and these uh, edge weights represent distances between cities, and the objective is find to find a tour or a cycle that goes through all cities, such that the sum of edge weights, which is the sum of the distances that you travel, is as low as possible, as small as possible. So, uh, you know, like the cost here means the sum of edge weights. The sum of <coughs> edge weights. This is the cost. Now, in, in this example, you know, what's the, what's the solution? So the solution here is, is obvious. In fact, you, if you just do this, if you do this, this is the minimum weight or the minimum cost cycle. So just this, uh, so look, this makes the problem look easy. Right, so this is, in fact, this is the optimal solution. Now, why did I use this example? Because uh, this example will show that the most, probably the most intuitive algorithm to this problem, that you know, the first algorithm that comes to your mind here, if you were to think of an algorithm for solving this problem, would, be, would probably be an, a greedy algorithm. So you start from one vertex, and if you think greedily, what would you do? Take one. Take one, take one. Yeah, take one. Well, why? Because it's the lowest cost edge, or the edge with the lowest weight. So if you think greedily, you will take this. And then, if you continue to think <coughs> greedily, take two and yeah, again, take two. And if you continue to think greedily, yeah, you cannot go to A again, right? Because you are looking for you are looking for a simple cycle. So if you go to A, you cannot go to A un unless until you are done with all other vertices. So uh, let me change these back to blue, in fact, so that we don't get okay. So this is blue, blue, blue. This is two. And this is two, sorry, this is three. Three, two, two. So thinking greedy, we start with this one, then we go to this, this is two, then thinking greedy, we must go to C now. And then we end up with, yeah, with this. So this is an example that shows that you know, how a greedy algorithm fails on this problem. And this is a typical uh, you know, phenomenon in, in algorithms. Uh, if the problem is complex enough, greedy algorithms fail because a greedy algorithm makes a decision based on the current numbers or based on local information. It's not, it's not looking ahead. You know, it's not looking ahead. So it's making a decision that appears to be the best decision at the moment. And if the problem is hard enough, the decision that appears to be the best at the moment may end up being a terrible, you know, may end up leading to a terrible solution. This is the case, you know, this is an example, right? So, you know, here, when we were at B, we had two choices. T or th two or three, of course we're not, we don't have any kind of look ahead. So we don't know what is ahead of us. You know, what's the price that we will be paying in the future? So based on this local information, this two is slightly better than three. So we got greedy and we took the two and then we got punished at the end, right? Of course, you know, if, uh, if the traveling salesman problem uh, had a simple greedy algorithm for solving it, people would have solved it a long time ago. But 
the problem is still open. Nobody knows how to solve it in polynomial time. It's still a problem that nobody knows how to solve. Nobody uh, has a polynomial time algorithm for solving this problem. Now, why did I give these two different examples? To make the distinction between, so both problems are MP-complete, but they have a different nature. The difference in nature is that this is a yes-no problem. So in this problem, the, the solution is just a yes-no answer. So it's a decision problem. This is a decision problem where the answer is just yes-no, while this is an optimization problem. So this is the difference between these two problems. One is a decision problem, one is an optimization problem. Now in NP-completeness theory, there is, an, uh, there, is a, there is an advantage of working with decision problems. So in fact, everything that we will be studying in NP-completeness will be based on decision problems. Now the traveling salesman problem is an optimization problem. But we can recast this problem as a decision problem. Or we can uh, you know, come up with a decision problem that is related to this problem and can be used, in fact, even in practice. It can be used to solve the optimization problem. Uh, the, if, if we have a solution to the decision problem, we can use it to solve the optimization problem. 